All right. Well, this uh, this is a, uh, a session about social media. Um, it's Greg Milner here from Worldwide Salon Marketing, and um, uh, joining me today is our social media marvel, uh, Josh Kalmeyer. Um Josh, good morning. Good morning. Um, Josh is barely 21 or not even 21 yet. Um, and so Josh comes from a generation which doesn't know life before social media. I come from a generation that uh, was surprised when the fax machine and the microwave oven were invented. Um, so Josh is far better placed than I to talk about social media. And I know that um, certainly people of... Uh, any, anyone older than 30 or 40 um, would be confused and uh, overwhelmed by the, the task that social media presents uh, in terms of business. So this session is really about Josh uh, trying to clear a bit of that fog uh, and talk about the differences between um, the various social media platforms. And let's bear in mind that social media is just another form of media um, a communication channel to your clients and, and prospective clients. So uh, we need to think of it in those terms for for business. Uh, I guess, Josh, let's let's just start with some of the peculiar peculiarities of social media and how they relate to people in business. I mean, uh, most people I I come across in business tend to use social media as merely a platform to pitch their wares. Is that clever thinking or inaccurate thinking or confused? How should it be viewed? It's a bit of both. It's right in between. It used to be as simple as posting and, and, and pitching straight into a sale. <laughs> but given how, how quickly Facebook has, has grown and bearing in mind Facebook owned Instagram, so you have to, to, to anything that, that's to do with Facebook is also to do with Instagram. Um, it, it, the, the influx of all these different ads, different people posting with Facebook groups. Uh, now we've got the messenger bots bearing in mind with, you've got not just Instagram, you've got Pinterest ads, you've got uh, Snapchat, you've got all these different platforms. The only way to break through and to really be able to get clients to get leads of any form is when people trust you. And the only way that they will, will build any form of trust with you is, is of, of two, two factors. Number one is repetition. So meaning multiple different posts, uh, more images, more, more videos, more, more blogs, um, but also value added content. So whether it's uh, little things like how to, how to contour your, your, your cheekbones or, 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 you know, how to, uh, uh, in our case, it's, it's how to post, post effectively on Instagram. Um, the only way to really to, to break through and, and, and get leads or get sales from social media is, is building that trust. And that takes time. What kind of things should people, let's, let's take Instagram for, for a moment. And you've got a program that uh, dramatically grows Instagram followers, but, and we'll talk about that a bit later, but Josh, what, is the purpose of posting on Instagram? Twofold, building trust and building authority. We are uh, so amassed by different, uh, you know, different ads, different, different people. You know, you'll, you'll go onto Amazon and you'll look at a pair of Ray-Bans and for the next three months, Amazon will remind you that you haven't purchased that pair of Ray-Bans with different ads that appear on Google, different ads that appear in your timeline on Facebook. Um, eventually, you're going to most likely cave and you're gonna buy those pair of Ray-Bans. Now, that's the best way to get use of, of whether it's Facebook or if it's Instagram. Um, the authority aspect is that when people trust you, it's because you know what you're talking about. You, uh, you, you're the go-to person. And only when you're the go-to person, only when people know that you, you know what you're talking about, do they trust you. So it's the twofold uh, equation when it comes to building that trust. All right. So 
what kind of things should people post on Instagram? What kind of, because Instagram's about pictures, isn't it? Instagram's pictures and, and it's visual. So it's, it's photographs and videos. Uh, videos can be posted up to a minute long. Uh, usually it, it really is, it, it has to be personable. So whatever you post on Instagram can't be identical to what you post on Facebook. It's just not the same. It's not, it's not personable. So um, you can you can post up you know multiple different photos or or a, a mix of different photos and different videos in each different post. But anything that shows that you're real. So regardless of if you have you know four different employees at your salon, the more real that you are, and by real I mean sharing every little you know parts of your life so your 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 kids as an example if one of them is graduating high school post that people love that people connect with that uh, little things like uh, quotes you know sunday morning grogginess because you went out the night before or you had a wedding to go to or things like that being real as as almost contradictive as it sounds being real on social media is what helps you sh uh, shine through what what makes you stand out and be different that with also the corny quotes really does get attention okay so give us some examples of what's happened you work i mean you work with a bunch of uh, of clients who you've helped grow their instagram feed dramatically what have they done or what what have you done to achieve that and what's been the results uh, I guide them through the first thing and it's the most crucial element is guiding them through what type of posts so what type of content you put out there meaning what type of images what type of photos what type uh, sorry videos how frequently what type of hashtags you use um, believe it or not even using emojis in the descriptions is is does matter it all matters and that's why it's so confusing. It's why it's so overwhelming. So the results we've gotten have, have been um, tripling, quadrupling the followers in a matter of months, if not weeks. Um, not just that, but on my, my favorite method is when you're on Instagram, you can actually search in your local area for people posting around, you know, a, a, a specific geo, uh, geographical location. You can then go to those people as your, your uh, Instagram page and start messaging them. Hey, do you want a free IPL? Or, hey, do you want a free makeup lesson or whatever? Um, and people go, yeah, I want that for free. And they'll give you their information, so the name, their email, their phone number, and suddenly you have a new lead that you can get in. So uh, using Instagram, you you can do a search. Just run. I wasn't aware of that. You can do a geographical search of people who are following yes. you on Instagram, and if not they're even, nearby, even ones that aren't following you. So if, for instance. Uh, you know, you have a salon that's say five kilometers from the beach. You can open up Instagram, you can search around the beach. So let's say you wanted to get any any females that were posting at the beach. So you go and you're scrolling through and you just go to each different profile. You can get an idea of who they are, how old they are and so on. Let's say you found one particular profile and she checked in or she tagged herself being at the beach say three, four, five hours ago. Even could be upwards to a week ago, if not longer. Um, you go onto her page, you, you can, there's little three dots in the top right hand corner and you can hit send message. Then that's when you go, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm Janine. I'm, I'm from XYZ beauty salon. Uh, listen, I wanted to give you free, uh, you know, it could be contouring, it could be an eyebrow, whatever it is, some type of offer that, that has to make them feel special. And then they, most of the time, if it's something for free, if it's an offer that they just, they cannot say no to, that's when they give you their number. That's when you call them on the phone and you say, hey, when would you like to come in? So suddenly you're taking them off the screen and onto the phone. So that's the, that's the purpose of it. The purpose of it is to get them online, but take them offline yeah. as soon as you possibly can. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So it's, exactly. it, the, the main purpose of Instagram is for business is to attract interest and increase the number of followers because it is a numbers game. And then it is a numbers game. private message them. That is one way. That is effectively a borderline freeway. The only cost there is time. It is very time consuming. That's without any form of advertising. Um, 
So it, it, it is, there are a lot of other different ways that you can go about it, but that's the most effective way without any form of money up front. There's no advertising cost, it just requires you or someone you know just to sit there and to go through and make sure that you're messaging the right people. Okay. So presumably if people do have time and, and if, if their businesses aren't overflowing with clients, they're going to have time. So it's worth an experiment yes. to spend a few hours private messaging people who are already following you on Instagram. Is that right? Yes, correct. Now, because you are a local business, therefore those who have checked in at a geographical location or in a, you know, a surrounding area, that's going to be a lot less than say, if I was to go and look at people who have hashtags, uh, let's say success, um, you know, that, that number game will be incredibly um, uh, smaller. So the people you're working with are more inclined to say yes, because not only you're a physical location, they're close to you, but you also give, if you give them something for free or at least some type of offer and then you do the work and you, you have the scripts in place, the other systems and the processes in place that they get them as a, you know, to turn them into a repeat client. That's when it pays off. Okay. Um, We'll move on to Facebook, if we may, because Facebook and Instagram are essentially, for, for most businesses, are the, the main social media platforms, aren't Forever they? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, They're the two biggest ones that are most relevant right now. Okay. Um, for our, just before we do that, for our guests on this um, webinar, if you want to ask Josh a question about anything to do with social media, just unmute yourselves and um, pipe up. Um, in the meantime, we'll just keep we'll just keep talking. Um, Josh, could you share uh, an example of Facebook or the use of Facebook um, that's been quite successful and how it happened? Have you got control? Can you can you share your screen? Yep, I can. I can share my screen. So this is. Uh, I'll do that right now. This is a client of ours in a suburb in Perth, uh, and uh, Diamond Beauty Lounge. So we ran a few ads. This is this is an ad right here. Now this usually appears in your timelines when you're on your phone, and you're you're scrolling through the, the, the timeline or your your feed, or even on the desktop. This ad would appear. Um, now we we designed this graphic to be yellow, not only to fit in with with uh, her, her color scheme, but to stand out. So this is a particular ad and you can tell because the little button down here says sign up. That's a customizable call to action inside of Facebook. So when you click on that, it takes you off of Facebook into an opt-in page. So I've already got here. Uh, that's that is very simple. There's a free underarm IPL treatment valued at $70. Now the only thing that really costed, you know, the, 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 her, her cost was not just the time or the, the wages, but it was uh, it was the, um, the 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 jelly that they use in or with the IPL, you know what two three four dollars at the max, and with her her systems and by systems I mean scripts and the way that she treated her clients she turned let me have a look at the statistics here we've got uh, over a period of. I believe it was about three days, three to four days. She spent uh, thirty nine ninety nine at eighty five clicks, at eighteen cents per click. Now I don't actually have how many opt ins were on on this particular page, but it was around the forty five mark. So forty five opt ins, meaning forty five different people put in their name, their email, and their phone number. Uh, so she called all forty five, and from that she booked in. I believe it was about 23, 24. From that, she had 10 to 10 to 12 repeat clients from it. So 10 to 12 new repeat clients from a spend of, what was it, $40? $40, yeah. It's not that bad. So now she, sorry. So, so that that's, that's a paid advertising on Facebook. So that's a different thing from, it's different from just posting in your timeline, yeah? Correct, correct. Posting on the timeline. So if I go back to just her page in general, 
I don't believe she's that active. No, she's not. She's not that uh, active. However, and I will come back to reviews. So she's got a lot of great reviews here. Um, if she's posting different images. Yeah. Now these are good. The only thing is, bear in mind, 75 to 83% of people who use Facebook are always going to be on their phone. They're going to be sitting on the bus. They're going to be sitting on the train. They're going to be sitting at a cafe. They're going to be at home on the couch. They're going to be brewing a cup of tea just standing there on, on, their, on their phone. And it's, it's create, curating content, so creating images, uh, before and afters, things like that, that, that make people want to. They're just going to be standing there scrolling, and, and we have to have things that make them stop. To make them that the grasp their attention. We're, we're no longer in a convincing environment. We're in the attention grabbing environment, and, and that's a big difference. So you really only have a couple of seconds, if not microseconds, to grasp their attention. So, for instance, this type of before and after is uh, for the lip fillers. So you know, anyone who, and I, I really don't like to put it this way, but it's the only way that I can put it, is everything that you post on Instagram, uh, on Facebook, on social media as a whole, it's the only way that you get people's attention is by, I, I dare use the term playing on people's uh, human psychology, because anyone who, who's consciously aware, as an example with this before and after, about their, their lips, and they want fuller lips, you've got to keep scrolling, and, and they're going to stop when they see that, because it's at the back of their mind. So. If, for instance, you wanted to, to pay for that particular post, so you, you boost that post, which means you turn a free post on the on a Facebook page into an ad, you can target and find people who are interested in beauty, or if you really wanted to go into the, 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 the depths, you can start to find people who have been searching for things like lip fillers or Botox or... You know, if you're, you're, you're promoting makeup or, or IPL, you can go down that road. It, it really is quite uh, to the extreme of how we can target people. But there are some issues with what Facebook will allow you to do and what they won't allow you to do, aren't there? Like, for example, uh, before and after photos. They don't want, they don't like you using before and after photos in paid advertising. You can do it in free timeline posts, but not yes. in paid advertising, yeah? To a degree. It, every pay, it depends on what the before and after is. When it comes to anything in the health industry, because unfortunately the beauty industry and even the hair industry falls under Facebook's health category, um, they are all reviewed by a, either a special bot or, or humans. So sometimes you can have before and afters if they're legitimate and if you can prove that they're legitimate, meaning this is, for instance, if you had a fat cab service or a fat cab machine, you can say, and you have a, a, you know, a, a, um, a measurement around the person in the before and the after, there are ways around it. There are ways that make it, uh, you know, make them approved. Um, but you have to know what you're doing, don't you? Uh Let's take. Let's go back to advertising per se. This is paid advertising, running ads on Facebook. Um, you've got to really know what you're doing in terms of how to create an audience for those ads, where you want those ads to appear, how often they want you want them to appear, etc. Um, you have to have the right intentions behind it. There's yeah. no point putting a bunch of advertising if you don't even, if you don't have the right systems, the right infrastructure. Meaning, if you don't have any opt-in pages, there's no point running people to your homepage. No. So you've got to have a landing page on your website somewhere. Correct. Correct. Otherwise, you're just wasting money. Is that right? Essentially. Because you're never going to know the results of your advertising if you're just sending people to your homepage. Exactly. Yeah. You, you need, with every ad, you need a specific call to action, so a specific thing that you want them to, you, you want your visitors to do. It could be opt-in to your, to your email list so you get their name, their email, and their phone number, or you maybe you want them to call them. Whatever it is, you need a specific outcome. Yeah, a specific goal. But the beauty of what the, the beauty of uh, digital marketing, as I see it, is, is that it's instantly measurable within a matter of a day or two, isn't it? Uh, heck, even a matter of hours. So, in um, on particular websites, 
in fact, any website that you own, you can have, I'm gonna bring up our website just to show this. You can have a Facebook pixel. It's a piece of code that Facebook gives you that I've got a little plugin in my Google Chrome that tells me about it. So I've got the pixel here for us. So essentially anyone that comes in to, to our website, we can track. We've, actually, we've got two pixels. So everyone who comes onto the site, we can then go and push more ads too. So if you have that on your website, which is quite easy to install if you have, A, if you know how, but B, if you have access to your website, uh, you can then go and push ads to people who have visited your site. So, And then just, from there, just, you can track. To, sim to simplify that, anybody who comes to your website from for anywhere on Facebook. From anywhere. Not just Facebook, but Google, from anyone who's, who's sat on their phone and typed in your URL. Yep. Anyone who has visited your site, you can then go and, and put uh, Facebook ads in front of them. Okay, so you can put some bit of code on your own website that then the internet recognises that that person has been to your website and they will see your ad in Facebook somewhere. Yes. That's, that's called retargeting. Yes. That, that's pretty cool, isn't it? So the, the yeah. internet knows that they've been to your website, so when they're on Facebook, they'll see one of your ads. Exactly. So that goes back to my shopping on Amazon analogy. So if you, if you went and looked at a pair of Ray-Bans on Amazon and for the next three, four, five, six months, they were constantly reminding you, you constantly see different ads on your feed, on Google, on Pinterest, on, on even Instagram, uh, you know, that you should go and buy this particular pair of Ray-Bans, that's retargeting. Okay. So there's a piece of, of, of code on almost any major website, Apple, Amazon, Yahoo, all the big ones have it. Their own different versions of them. Uh, but particularly with Facebook, that they can go and put ads in front of you if you've gone to your site. Because I've noticed that when, you know, I, I have an interest in fishing and, 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 and camping and all that mm -hmm. sort of stuff. Uh, it doesn't matter where I go on the internet. Um, I see ads for fishing and camping things. Uh, it, Google just seems, yeah, yeah. Google just seems to throw them up, and I, I go, how do they know I'm interested in that? And that's how they do it. If you, if you have a Google account and you use Google, which most people use Google with or without an account, but even if you have Facebook logged in on your phone, not even just the Facebook app. But if you have Facebook logged in on, let's say, Safari or Google Chrome or Firefox, even on any of your computers, your iPads, your Androids, whatever, anything that you Google, anything that you, uh, you, you look at on Facebook, not only can Google pick it up, Facebook can pick it up. Now, it's all anonymous. So meaning no one, one employee at, say, Apple or, uh, sorry, Facebook or Google can type in your email and see what you've been looking at. They can't do that. But what it is used for is if you wanted to go and target, let's say, females aged 30 to 36 based outside of Sydney who drive a BMW and earn more than $150,000 per year and are married with three children, you can do that. We've never had that level of complexity, that level of, of specificity and, and almost immediate results or at least immediate data with those uh, with those campaigns. We've, we've never had that level before. Um, and it's only been in the last two, three years, even in the last six months, that we've properly been able to use those tools, those targeting, and to put that in English, to be able to find the right people to put your salon or your business in, in front of. So, so you, you, help, you help businesses set up Facebook advertising knowing all yeah. of those, that, that infrastructure and all those parameters. Yes. Yeah. So what's the process of setting up a, a Facebook ad campaign? You need a, ideally a website or at least at the, at the, the very, very least you need some form of landing page. You do need a Facebook page. Uh, you can run Instagram ads without an Instagram account. There are ways around that. It's quite easy. Um, and as long as you have an idea or an offer that you can give people that will stand out or even better is long term. If you can 
really start putting out, let's say, videos. Uh, maybe there are a couple of blog posts on on how to choose the right makeup brushes or how to choose the right beauty salon, things like that. Long term, if you can start building trust with people, start getting them onto your website, uh, building your 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 database, so your email list, getting getting in leads and getting them into clientele. It, the return on that is tenfold. When you have the system right, when you know what works and you really know who you're going to, to target or put simply what type of people you want to see, you know, you, you want to find, the return on that is unlike anything we've ever seen before. And instantly measurable. Yes. So you have, for instance, if I share my screen again, In the, this is the back end of a uh, Facebook ads account. This is just one ad. So you can see that there's been 85 clicks. And this is just the way that we've set it up is just to track clicks. So we can track opt-ins. We can track the amount of people. For instance, uh, there's been 227 clicks just on the post. But 85 went to the website. So you can track everything. Okay, that's that's incredible, isn't it? The amount of detail. Josh, can we go yeah. back to Instagram for a moment? Um, can you uh, talk to us about the program that you've implemented to help businesses grow their Instagram uh, followers and therefore their audience? I noticed we've got Effie uh, on the call. Um, hello, Effie, if you can hear us. Yep. Uh, you put this in place for Effie, I think, at uh, Escape Beauty Lounge in Hobart, didn't you? What are the I figures did. for that? I did. I'm going to pull up her account. You know what, Effie Escape. I'm going to Google it. So, oh, it's, called, it's very simple. It's, it's called Grow Your Instagram, and it does exactly that. All it does is, is automate the process of liking people's photos. There's no comments. There's none of that spammy follow, unfollow thing. It's finding real people around real areas that are more likely to you know, want you and to want what you give them, so to want your services. So the more people that see you, the more people that follow you, there's, there's a two-fold thing on that. A, it's a numbers game, like we said. So the more people that see you, the more likely they're going to take action as long as you've put out the right call to action. But also that the more numbers you have, it goes back to the trust and that authority. So people are more likely to trust someone that has, let's say, uh, 1,200 or 2,000, 5,000 different um, uh, followers than someone or a different salon that has, say, 500. There's a big, there's a big trust difference. There's a big authority difference. Um, with with Effie as an example, we took her from it was three hundred and eighteen followers in September, October last year to now I've got her account in front of me to one thousand two hundred and ninety six followers. So that's a, that's a fourfold increase in a few months. Correct. Yeah. Effie. That can being you... said, she's still posting on an almost daily by daily basis just i've got her account in front of me yeah Effie, can you hear us i've unmuted you mm, possibly not might not have a microphone so what can be the effect of that um josh in terms of growing an audience on instagram it gives you more opportunity to reach more people obviously yes yes it does uh it's it's not just social proof but it's also getting in front of more people. Yeah. Uh, and and like we said, it's all a numbers game. So, so you've got this. You've got this program, and I'll just share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes. So this this is the Grow Your Instagram program, and what is it? Forty nine dollars a month. Uh, Forty nine no plus GST in Australia. Yeah. Um, Australia. Yes. There's no contract with that, is there? Not at all. So you just you just sign up and, and quadruple your your uh, number of followers over a, a short period of time, um, and you set that up for them, do you, Josh? Um, correct. Yes. So you go to this this website. I'll put this up in the in the chat screen. Um, 
So you go to, I hope everyone can see this. If I put that website up there, everyone should be able to see that in the chat screen. It's basically worldbytowermarketing.com, yes. grow your Instagram. Um, and and you've had uh, lots of uh, members and, and non-members on that, haven't you? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, if anyone wants to ask a question of Josh, uh, can you open your mic or unmute yourself and, and um, fire away? Because um, this is a great opportunity to get your questions answered. And also, if you want to, um, if you want to get in touch with Josh uh, and just get him working for you, the, the number here is zero eight nine four four three nine three two seven. I'll put that up on on this chat screen as well. Zero eight nine four four three nine three two seven. So, just give us a call and uh, and uh, ask for Josh. Uh, and he'll walk you through some of the processes. Josh, what do you? What, what's the charge for setting up a a, a Facebook campaign currently? Yeah, that is uh, three hundred plus GST. Now that involves not only getting access to all of the the Facebook and Instagram pages, but uh, well, if you have one set up, awesome. If not, we set one up for you. Also involves tweaking your site to include the Facebook pixel. So allowing for, for tracking and retargeting ads, it also involves setting up the first campaign. But okay, it so does it, take it, it takes a bit of setting up, doesn't it? It's quite a, yeah. a tedious manual process. Uh, but once yes. it's set up, it's easily tweaked and changed and, and uh, you report exactly. on the numbers for those, don't you? Exactly. The good thing with, with everything that we do, whether it's the Grow Your Instagram, whether it's the Facebook ads, it could even be Google ads, you have numbers. You can see exactly you have X amount of followers, you have X amount of clicks, you have X amount of, of opt-ins. It's all okay. trackable. Yep. All right, Angela, Latoya, Effie, if you don't have any questions for uh, Josh, um, then we'll wrap it up. But uh, uh, oh, hang Angela. on. Yeah, Angela's yes. asking, can monthly. you just pay monthly? How many months do you need to sign up for? You don't need to sign up for any number of months, Angela. It's just a uh, an ad hoc arrangement. If you want to, if you want to run Facebook advertising for, you know, a yes. week or two or three, um, that's that's no problem. If you want to run grow your Instagram for a couple of months to see how it goes, that's that's uh, no problem at all. You the can thing, do that. The thing with either with the Facebook ads or the grow your Instagram is you can see the effects almost immediately. Facebook ads do take a little longer to see the effects. To grow your Instagram, you'll see within 24, 48 hours. Uh, uh, so it, you'll, you'll it, see new followers within 24 to 48 hours. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Anything? Uh, is that... The more, sorry. Does that answer your question, Angela? I hope so. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Terrific. terrific. Thanks, Angela. Um, that's been terrific, Josh. Thank you very much for that. Um, uh, don't forget to get in touch, folks, if, uh, if you need help with any of that um, here at the office in Perth. Uh, just look us up, worldwidesalonmarketing.com, and uh, you'll find our, uh, our numbers on, uh, on the internet.